Welcome back to the Owl Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Drew Carpenter. Today, we're diving back into the history of Sigma Pi, specifically what was lost throughout the years. Past Grand Sage Joe Palazzolo and Grand, or Grand Second Counselor Christian Mealy are here with me to recover the past of our fraternity. Joe and Christian, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks. So I've got a couple questions for you guys today. If you all are good with it, we'll go ahead and roll into them. Sure. Looking forward to it. Perfect. We've got quite a bit of questions for you all to help recover some of the past of the fraternity. So let's start on Sigma Pi Memorial Day. How did that come to fruition? Well, first, let's distinguish between what Sigma Pi Memorial Day is versus the larger, more well-known Memorial Day that we celebrate in this country. As our listeners surely know, our national Memorial Day holiday, it's a remembrance of those members of our armed forces who died in service. Our Sigma Pi Memorial Day, it's not specific to the armed forces at all, but rather this is a day to recognize those brothers who've passed to the Adonim on high. So I just want to make that clear distinction between the two events because their names are so similar. Now, from what I've seen in the Emerald Archive, actually it's in the second issue of the Emerald back in October 1st, 1914 is when it was published, There was a brief paragraph talking about some of the business that took place from the fourth biennial convocation. And I'll just read you that very brief paragraph now. It said, the National Memorial Day of Sigma Pi was changed to the first Sunday in May. On this day, each man should wear a small piece of crepe under his pin and services will be held in all chapter houses of the fraternity honoring our beloved dead. And that's it. That, that's all that's in the early archive of the magazine. And by the way, you know, our Emerald Magazine is essentially our national public record of the fraternity. I've also checked our Grand Council minutes going back to the 1950s, and I didn't see anything written about the National Memorial Day of Sigma Pi, although admittedly 70 years of minutes, and maybe I could have missed it, who knows. Now, uh, a number of years ago, I was doing some research into the early days of the fraternity, and specifically into the larger set of founding fathers, that is, not just the four founders, but all of the early men of Sigma Pi fraternity. And in that research, I came across that short paragraph that I just read, and it piqued my interest in what happened to that day. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had chapter brothers pass away. And seeing that Sigma Pi once had a recognized day to remember those who passed on, it just seemed like a nice tradition to me. I mean, I'd love to know where it was lost to history, to be honest, as the title of the podcast episode suggests, or where it was intentionally removed as a tradition. I'm sure there's an interesting story there. Maybe one day we'll uncover it. Anyway, I brought up the idea of reinstituting some sort of recognition for the brothers on the Adam on High, and in 2016, at Convocation in Las Vegas, the Constitution and Bylaws Committee moved to bring the National Memorial Day of Sigma Pi back in a more formal sense. And now, our Bylaw 11, Section 7, notes that the first Sunday of May is Sigma Pi Memorial Day. Very interesting, Joe. And and to your point, you know, we, we know how our alumni used to celebrate Sigma Pi Memorial Day. How should current members honor that day? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, Drew, because most of our undergraduates, thank God, will not have to face the tragedy of a chapter brother passing away while they're in the active chapter. So let me offer a few suggestions on how to recognize Sigma Pi Memorial Day. First, for our undergraduates, I think a tasteful social media post might be a good method of acknowledging the day and offering a few comments, recognizing that both in Sigma Pi fraternity and, of course, in life, we build on the successes of the generations who came before us. Something short and direct, I think, would be a very good approach at recognizing the day for our undergraduate chapters. Second, 
for our alumni and especially to our active alumni clubs out there, the first Sunday of May could be an ideal time to get together for this recognition. But what I want to stress here is that you shouldn't see this as a gloomy or depressing event. Instead, you know, I recommend that the alumni club host an event, maybe a golf outing in collaboration with the executive office. And at the beginning or the end of that event, when everyone is gathered together to take a few moments and recognize Sigma Pi Memorial Day, perhaps you can follow the example of the Grand Chapter and have a listing of the names of brothers who passed on during the last year or the last biennium. As you know, we do this at Convocation, and it's an incredibly powerful event. And then my last recommendation is just follow the guidance in the bylaws. The bylaws suggest performing the memorial service, which is in our manual of ceremonies, and that's never a bad thing. The memorial service is a solemn and reverent ritual, and I've seen it performed a few times with tremendous care and consideration. You know, you can never go wrong when you engage in our ritual to recognize our brothers, even those brothers who've passed away. I like that recommendation, Joe. You know, it's certainly something I'm not familiar with, but having seen uh, you know, the first kind of memorial service at, my, at the most recent convocation, uh, something I'd love to, to see more. So I appreciate you sharing that power, part of history. My next question, so another piece of history I'd love to understand is our province names. How have those evolved over time? This one is a, is a little bit uh, simpler, with, with a little bit less history involved. But uh, originally, provinces actually used the same naming conventions as our chapters. Um, that is to say, they were assigned a Greek letter designation. So just like you might have Alpha Chapter or Delta Beta Chapter, um, our provinces were named Alpha Province or Beta Province, etc., and uh, it was the Lewis Moore Constitution of 1912, uh, which was uh, drafted by um, Byron R. Lewis and Lewis L. Moore. The, uh, the former, obviously, was our Grand Herald Emeritus and uh, our first honorary Grand Sage. And Lewis L. Moore was our fifth Grand Sage. They worked together on, you know, sort of, I would say, a reconstruction of our Constitution after the, the events of the Patterson episode came to a head. Uh, at the, the 1910 convocation. And what they did was they provided uh, in that constitution of 1912 that every state would have its own archon. Um, originally, they weren't necessarily called province archons. They were just called archons. And then province archon became sort of the, the, uh, the nomenclature at a later point. But these, uh, these provinces originally were state by state. In fact, in the Patterson constitution, they were called regents, although that, that system never got off the ground. Uh, it, it did finally, after you know the 1912 uh, Constitution was passed, um, every uh, state had an archon. Um, so depending on how many chapters you had in that state, you would be in that province. Uh, and then eventually, as the fraternity grew and provinces uh, became more regional in scope versus you know just state by state, uh, they were assigned names that better identified and aligned with the general geographic area that comprised the province. So for example, you know, you might have like today the Mid Atlantic Province or the Greater New Jersey Province or, you know, the Ozark Province. And I think that's a, a better system ultimately because if I were just to say to you, uh, Alpha Province, you wouldn't necessarily know where in, in the land of Sigma Pi Alpha Province is versus today, if I were to say, you know, the Keystone Province, well, you would know that Pennsylvania is the Keystone State. And so you can probably guess that the Keystone Province would encompass those chapters. In close proximity to the Pencil the greater Pennsylvania area, uh, you know, when I was an undergraduate uh, going to a, a college in Maryland, uh, you know, no surprise we were part of the what was then known as the Virginia Maryland province, and so uh, it remains to this day that we uh, now name our provinces uh, uh, again based on some you know more recognizable geographic area versus just the Greek letter designation. Christian, that's really interesting and you know, certainly more uh, more inclusive, right? The universal terminology, especially when I'm out doing expansion work on the road, letting campuses, your Greek advisors, students at those universities know a chapter, a future chapter at that university would fall into you know blank province. Using that geographic term definitely may, may, uh, means a lot more to them than just saying you know, alpha province, beta province. Uh, so that's super interesting to hear. Let me, let me just offer a thought or two on provinces. 
Uh, I've served as the New Jersey Province Archon back when it was just New Jersey, not the greater New Jersey Province Archon. I've had the pleasure of working with our province archons all over the land of Sigma Pi. And during my term as Grand Sage, I had the pleasure of visiting virtually all of our chapters and, and visiting all of our provinces and attending a lot of province events. One thing that has struck me over the years is, is the naming. We know what a province means, but let's be honest, we're deeply involved in Sigma Pi. And for us to say something like Founders Valley Province or Greater New Jersey Province, we know exactly what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is a region, a geographic region. I, I don't get the sense that many of our members immediately identify the word province with region. And for my part, I've been suggesting to our, our team at the executive office and to our brothers on the Grand Council that when the opportunity presents itself, potentially at the 2024 convocation, that might be a good chance to restructure the naming that we use and move from province to region, because that's what it is. And, you know, that would change a couple of things in the governing documents. That shouldn't be a big lift for any of us. But one of the things that would change is the name of the individual who advises the area. Right now, we call them a province archon. Again, I don't think many of our members immediately understand what an archon is, but we're really talking about a regional advisor. And moving to the regional phrase and advisor for the province archon mirrors what we did with chapter directors becoming chapter advisors. So not just changing the name province for consistency, but also because that's our new convention. Joe, that's an interesting recommendation. I'm excited to see kind of how that pans out in future conversations. Likewise, I understand there's something else you wanted to add in today. So I'll, I'll turn the floor back over to you, Joe. Yeah, just a quick comment here. I know uh, Christian and myself and many others out there, we've been able to learn about our history. In essence, we've been able to figure out how items have become lost to history by using the Emerald Archive that the executive office has on the website. So I want to give a quick shout out to Chris Carter, you, Drew, our entire executive office team. We've done a tremendous job on preserving our history through that Emerald Archive. So for our listeners, I cannot encourage you enough. Go to our website, sigmapi.org. Go to the Emerald Archive. Spend some time reviewing the Emeralds, the public record of Sigma Pi fraternity. It is an incredible resource, and you should all take advantage of it to learn more about your fraternity. We'll take a break right here and pick up this discussion in part two when it's released in a couple of weeks. For everyone listening, hit subscribe, and please leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. And as always, I believe.